Our characters had just concluded their respective investigations. They each broke off exploring different parts of Devon's port with uh, one of them heading to the house of uh, one of the victims of the shooting. Uh, another one exploring the home of, uh, well, another one of the victims, but an adult in the form of the teacher, Dubois. And uh, the third heading to the hospital to check out the forensics reports and any kind of analysis there. Each of them came upon something disturbing, something a little odd and unexpected, sometimes in the form of esoteric symbols that they frankly had no reason to recognize, otherwise in the form of hallucinations, at least what feel like they must have been hallucinations, because what other rational explanation is there for what uh, Sylvia went through, as we will establish, but our characters haven't had the opportunity to communicate these experiences with each other, at least until now. They're all meeting up again, to exchange information acquired and plot the course ahead. Once again, they return to the motel, which was where they had their first meeting. As I say, central ground, just on the outskirts of Devonsport. It feels appropriate, it feels safer to be outside Devonsport itself, while discussing some of the oddities within it. Almost like it would be sacrilege to start accusing the place you've called home for so long of being anything other than perfect. There is always that strange feeling with Devonsport, like, the amount of time and energy you invest in living there, in building your community and keeping it safe in some of your cases, means that you're never allowed to say a bad word against it. You're certainly never allowed to physically work against it. And, well, anything along the lines of criticism of a upstanding member of the community like Jessica Inzio would be a big no-no. You almost feel revolted at the possibility that you could accuse her of wrongdoing. And yet all of you know on a not even particularly deep level that there is something wrong in Devonsport, and your recent investigations have proven that. And so here you are once again at the motel, standing in the dipping afternoon sun, as the traffic runs by, leaning against your respective vehicles, looking a little worse for wear for your experiences, and now ready to share what you've learned. As I've been stepping out of the car where I've taken to eating, I uh, have uh, not gathered much physical material, so... I just stand there, leaning against the hood of my car, with the briefcase on the side, and um, I'm producing from what you can see a, a, a napkin that I'm staring intently at for a second before putting down. And I look up to you both and I say, Right, so I understand that you've had time to do slightly more visits than to the police station, is that right? I get out of my car and take a moment to enjoy the cooler air. It's been a odd day, but I'm starting to feel a little better now, after the incident at the police station at least. I see Sylvia. I raise an eyebrow. Part of me had completely forgotten that she was even involved in this, but good, I guess she went off to find some stuff with her contacts, so maybe she can fill in the gaps. I go over, tip my hat, and say, Miss Spears? Yeah, we found a few things. Uh, let's maybe go inside the hotel and uh, have a little debrief. Toby is here uh, as well, of course. I have gotten out at the, the close-by bus stop, and um, I've made my way uh, over to you. And um, I look at you with um, anticipation and uh, as though I have a lot of things I want to say but I might not be willing to, to say it right out here so with you gesturing towards the motel um, 
I move to get in there. As you enter the motel, you are once again in the stifling warmth of the conference room. It seems quite a long time ago that you were here last, but it was only in the morning since your investigation began. And you sit at your table. Windows are now open, thankfully, but it doesn't seem to have done much to alleviate the heat. And you start pulling free the various pieces of evidence, the clues, the limited amount that you found in the various places you visited, lining them out in front of you so each of you can examine the things that you have obtained. You have there the symbols that you traced down found outside Dubois' home. You have the sketch of the killer's face, as Ashley Dapperton provided. You have the report snuck out by Sylvia. You are looking this information over, and... Dwayne, you recognize the sketched face, though it isn't the face of Patrick Wilson, the gunman. It's a face you haven't seen for quite a long time, in fact, but it jars you immediately. It sends your throat dry and fills your stomach with nausea. You go lightheaded. It's a secret to most, undoubtedly, but you have a son in Devonsport, or who used to live in Devonsport. Not a boy you were ever close to, born out of an affair. By the name of Eric. Eric Switzer, in full. You agreed with his mother that he would be raised by her and her husband. That you would have nothing to do with the boy's upbringing. It seemed more equitable that way, you agreed. You know, this was just a, a fling that led to something unwanted. You may not have used those words exactly. But the last you saw of Eric, back when he was a teen. And you're thinking now, must be maybe in his early 20s now? He looked like this. I squint hard at the sketch. It can't be Eric. But it looks just like him. I don't understand. I immediately just eye Toby and say, Wait, what? Could you repeat that again? Who Who's this supposed to be in this photo? I met with uh, Ashley, Patrick's girlfriend, as it turns out, and my uncle's daughter. She, um, she saw Patrick during the day, of course. He pointed his weapon at her, and she kept seeing this face. I believe she mentioned seeing it on the day when it happened, even. And, and it's haunted her since. There's some importance to it. She made... She put great importance into it. And this is the drawing that she made of it. I haven't seen the person before, um, but it may give us some kind of clue. I mean, we know that someone else is involved, right? I mean, the weapon, there were other fingerprints on it, right? And... We know that he probably couldn't have gotten a hold of an M16 by himself, the young Patrick, right? So, perhaps we're looking at the accomplice here, or... Hmm. But you saw the security footage. I don't... I start trying to rethink. We saw the footage. We saw one boy go in wearing that raincoat. But did we ever see in any of that footage... The actual face of the boy when he was doing the shooting, or was it always obscured slightly? Do I remember that? You remember the photos. There was very few that actually showed Patrick Wilson's face, but there were enough. And what's more, the one person you wouldn't doubt is your daughter, and she was present as one of, well, Patrick's shooters. She attested that Patrick was the shooter and he was gunned down. That's right. They positively ID'd the boy. Hell, his body's in the morgue. 
You wouldn't have made a mistake like that. No. This whole thing gets me extremely angry. I go over to this sketch and just throw it on the floor saying, Toby, that, that's fucking useless. That's not the same kid. There's only one kid there. You, you telling me that, what, two kids were dancing around in front of cameras? I, well, I have something to add to this, I say. And choosing to leave out the strange circumstances around having met two Dr. Burgers, I say, the person that I met at the morgue, they indicated that uh, there was blood, sources of blood, from a person not retrieved from the place. That there was another person there who possibly was shot as well, but they never retrieved a dead body from. So, that further indicates that there was someone else there. Kind of grunt, and again just sort of gesture to the diaries I found and the strange symbol that I took a moment to sketch, almost as if I'm trying to change the subject slightly. Oh, Dubois. Uh, I, I was right about Dubois. Dubois was involved. Look, look at, look, read some of this shit. The guy was delusional, paranoid, and he thought someone was trying to come and get him. I swear to God, something. He's, he's the link here. Who is this, Dubois? The teacher. The teacher. Shot three, four times. Yeah, no, have a look at this weird diary. The guy was completely off his rocker. He was hiding something, that's for sure. I uh, raise my hand with the napkin that I produced earlier, and I lay it out on the table as well. On it is a sketched symbol of something that looks almost like a key, but jagged and hard. Does this hold any resemblance to either of you? Does that symbol match the same symbol I've drawn? It's not identical, but it's similar. It is certainly similar. They contain the same three prongs or lines that run through them. The same crescent shape at some point in its structure. Again, they're not identical, but they appear to have been drawn or painted by the same individual in the same style. So hang on, wait, you, you got this symbol? Where, where did you find this symbol? I found my symbol, as I said, on Dubois' house, or rather, outside his house. It's kind of been hidden, on, like it's like someone graffitied his house. Interesting. Well, no, for me, it was rather the a strange pattern of how the, how the gunshot wounds were lined up. Looking at the different victims, um, this was a recurring symbol. I don't see how anyone could shoot with such precision, but, well, the person I met, the one calling himself Dr. Berger, he said that there was a strange circumstance where the wounds, they kept moving on the bodies as they looked at them from day to day. I know this sounds impossible but I saw the photos of same bodies with different different gunshot entry wounds and the way that they had moved around all had this pattern in common. The doctor himself, he, he couldn't explain it and he was conferring with his colleague who had seen the same phenomenon and they had also tried to get more verification from the FBI around this. He was certainly intrigued, and you see me looking a bit strained, as if I'm leaving something out. I just look down at the floor, getting more and more frustrated. It can't be, Eric, I think to myself, it can't be. Why would he? The boy had some problems. I, I remember that, but then he went off. He, he's in Seattle or something. Why would he? No, he, what if he did? What if there are two people involved? Shit. Look, whatever's going on here, it's nothing... It's nothing ordinary. We, you remember what happened with the weapon, right, Dwayne? I mean, there's weird stuff going on here. Tell me about that, I say, and look at the both of you quite insistently. We inspected the weapon that had been used, but it was it was locked in a cabinet, but when I, I, when I touched it, it was... It was 
hot. It, it burned me, and it was as if it had just been fired. It was completely uh, impossible, and it wasn't just me who felt it. You, you felt it too, Dwayne, right? I kind of give a non-committal grunt of agreement. I uh, start rubbing one of my hands as if I felt something there, as you say this about the burns. It's all right. Let's let, let's not be locked into what we would normally think of as possible. All right. This isn't the way things are supposed to be, but that doesn't mean that we can't find out what's happened. We can still we can still find out what. Who actually did this? I, maybe, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't just Patrick. I mean, on Ashley, it didn't sound like, like he was someone who would do that. You know. I have indications of that as well. That someone, someone was pulling the strings here, possibly wanting someone specific killed, or I don't know, one of the victims dead, and then that this happened, and perhaps this person. Then I say, and I indicate towards this sketch this one was somehow that one pushing him on not taking as active a part I um kneel down and pick up the sketch again and put it on the table so how do we find this person I mean if anyone has answers it's them I would like to speak to the Wilsons I would be curious to hear if they seen Patrick around this person, perhaps? Spending time with them, and uh, anything else leading up to the actual shooting that they might have thought of? Yeah, you haven't had time to speak with them yet, have you? Uh, no. Didn't really see the point. I suppose they might recognize this sketch. After that, though, we should go to the scene of the crime. It's time, I There'll be clues there. They'll, if someone else was there, I don't know how anyone could have missed it. But that's where the evidence would be. It would be there. You, 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 people don't just vanish. Come and go like that. But I point again to the to the sketch. But, I mean, it's this, this guy, if, if it, he has anything to do with it, he's not going to be there anymore, surely. I mean, he's going to be long gone, but maybe we can find him. I mean, you have resources. You... You have ways of tracking people, right? I mean, with with a sketch this good? Because, I mean, this is good. Ashley did good work. You could probably run this against some kind of database and find something. Dwayne, you do know that if this is indeed your illegitimate son, from what you remember, what you think, he isn't a resident of Devonsport now. Hasn't been for some years. You've not seen him. Uh, or heard from him. That said, you don't exactly maintain much contact with his parents, uh, who do still live in Devonsport. So, if you wanted to chase that down, you can certainly do so. Uh, but likewise, as as uh, you have mentioned them, the high school uh, is open to you, and the Wilsons can be questioned, if that's what you want to do. i tell you what, let's... We've got a lot of ground to cover, and the day's running short. I'll see what I can find out about this kid. You two go do the Wilsons. There's no reason for us all to go at the same time. It, it won't take me long. You're right, I, I, can, I can find people. I'll let you know what I find. I'll be quick. You said you had fingerprints on the murder weapon as well, so you would know if there's another. There are two possible venues of matches here, the way I see it. Yes, but those fingerprints were unidentified. They didn't match anything in any database, so... Well, that's probably because the person has not been convicted of anything yet. Yes. Well, I'd be alright to, um... I'd be alright with speaking to the Wilsons. Um, just gotta, you know, be careful, huh? Uh, I look to Miss Spears. Just have to be delicate, yeah? They, they've gone through a lot as well. They're probably not very popular in this town. You get the impression that I am very keen on seeing the Wilsons. You can notice that there is, might be something more than professionalism there, some kind of fervor. And I say, uh, yeah, well, I 
I, I don't really need the company, but if there is... Well, who knows? I, d I don't... If, if you would like to come with, I, I won't say no. You're part of this investigation as much as I am. I reckon both of you should go speak to them. I'll go do my thing, I'll be quick, and then we all meet at the school. How's that? Alright. Sure. It does come easy to you, Toby, to follow orders, as you mentioned. Dwayne's suggestion, it feels good that someone is taking charge. It feels a little like the old days and being put into rank and file. As you are leaving the motel conference room, Toby, once again your eyes are drawn to the other side of the busy street, less busy now than it was this morning, where you were sure you saw your brother huddled in a tightly bound parka. There's no one there now, but the absence of anyone, of anything, it feels strange to you. It's difficult to put your finger exactly on why. There's not like a black hole sucking in all of the air and colour around it. There's no unnatural darkness there. It is just a space on the pavement and the threadbare park beyond, but it's unsettling to see that absence. Perhaps it's a reminder that your brother just disappeared and hasn't returned. Yeah. I miss him. I mean, things have been weird for a while, but we've always cared for each other, and I need, I need someone, you know, who understands what I've gone through, and we have to look out for each other. I really need to find him. Perhaps, perhaps I will. Perhaps, perhaps Dwayne can help me out when we're done with this. We find them. As we get into my car, I uh, reach over to the glove compartment, possibly across you, Toby, if you've come to sit into the passenger seat, and I pull out uh, what looks like a small bottle of uh, whiskey, one of these tiny plastic ones that you might get in a hotel bar. And I just unscrew it with my teeth and I start drinking from it. You can see that there are a few more in there. Samples like Jameson and buried whiskies and uh, uh, bourbons. And I just gesture for you to take something if you want to. I'm very tempted. Very tempted. But not yet. Not, not, not until I have some clarity in all this. I, I, I just shake my head. I, I really shouldn't, you know? I uh, wipe my mouth and put the little cork back on, fixating you with my hawk-like pale grey eyes in this immaculate style of... in this immaculate appearance that I have. Uh, making a stark contrast of the crude gesture of drinking that alcohol just then. As I put it down, I say, So, yeah, I hear you're a war hero. I served. Must must have been tough on the nerves. I start the engine. Yeah, it really fucks you up. It's not something you come back from properly, you know? Uh, but, um, hey, I don't need to bore you with that, you know? Just glad I'm here, not over there. I say that even though that's not at all true. I really wish I was over there. Everything was so much easier over there. So much clearer. And I had a purpose. But I don't know, maybe I have a purpose now. Maybe maybe this can be my purpose for, for a bit at least. Then I'll find Ken and then we'll put everything back together. Yeah. I shrug at uh, you yourself brushing that away. Uh, giving you a non-committal look as if speak if you want to, speak if you don't. Um, keep your peace if you don't want to. And uh, I start driving the car, but I do remark, so do you have any personal involvement in this case other than being related to the mayor? That's why I'm here. You needed my help, and... 
I owe him, so, you know, I'll do whatever he asks. And that's all? That's it. It's kind of nice and simple that way. Hmm. What about you? Well, came from the top of the company, and I work for the person that I suspect was the one asking the mayor to look into this, to, or to have us look into this. I don't know why they, she would take such roundabouts in doing it. Other than that, I've just lost a grandson, I say, and changed the gears quite aggressively. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. That must have been dreadful. I can't even begin to imagine. I'm sorry. Yeah. It wouldn't have happened if not... Well, Patrick is not in my highest list of favorite people right now, but I saw him in the morgue. I saw his dead body, and I saw my grandson's dead body. He doesn't feel like a killer. I'd like to say that he is as innocent as my grandson, but the blame has to lie somewhere, and I want to know what kind of character these Wilsons have. I'm going to listen to what you said about, of course, we're going to be candid with this. I can be very candid, I say, fixating you again, and then looking back at the road. I, I have no doubt, I have no doubt, just, yeah. I I don't know much, but I, I know that they're not very well liked, and I'm surprised, to be honest, that they're still around. That that takes either courage or, or perhaps they didn't have a choice. The bodies haven't been released for various reasons. I wouldn't be surprised if they've just chosen not to move on until a proper burial has been held. And what are people supposed to do? Root up their whole lives and go where? Anywhere but here, right? Sylvia, please make uh, an avoid harm roll. That's an 11. Your reflexes are called into play. Uh, even though you're barely looking at Toby as you speak with him, your attention is, well, frankly, distracted at least to a small degree, in part due to the alcohol, in part due to the stress of the day, and in part due to the chatting with someone beside you, something you pretty rarely do in the car. And so that's why the figure in the road is a figure you can't help but collide with as you drive. One moment he wasn't there, and one moment he was. You just focus. It feels like everything slows down, and in front of you, in front of the hood of the car, you can see the tall frame, still wearing his doctor's coat, looking just slightly out of it, maybe? Drunk, stupefied, could be a good way to put it, of the first Dr. Berger that you encountered. What's strange aside from his sudden appearance in the road, where you couldn't see him before, and what is quite frankly a an obvious article of clothing, even though it's getting dark, someone in a white coat is quite easy to see, is his lack of trousers and underwear, and the fact that as he is stood there, shambling and swaying, he's just pissing a long stream in the road, and barely acknowledges the car that smacks into him, being driven by yourself. Toby, the impact makes you look up as well. Uh, you hadn't seen him there either. And there's a thump, a roll, and a thud, a disgusting crack, as you can't help but skid to the side of the road. There are no other cars around, no pedestrians. You're not in a lived-in area. It's all factories around you. You're on the way. You're not far, in fact, from the Wilson house, but so far as you know, it's just you two and Dr. Berger. Jesus fucking hell's on a stick, I say as I just 
slide onto the side of the road. <laughs> Where the fuck did he come from, I say. I just throw open the door to go out. What the hell? I, I also begin making my way out. Did I see what happened here? You saw a flutter of white fabric go up over the windscreen, and on, and then, and of course, you heard the noise, but you never caught full sight of the man. I don't know. It's, I saw something. It seemed to be. I don't know. But you, you hit something. What the hell? No shit! I hit something. I, I start rushing backwards just to. Hey, Doctor Berger. You look around the road, there's nothing there. You look down the verge and see if you can find a body. There is something. It looks like a strewn pile of white feathers. A thick streak of blood running across all of them. But certainly no body. Certainly no Dr. Berger. And the ground around you beyond that is largely flat. There's some chain-link fences surrounding some of the factories. There's some off-roads, but there's no way he would have been able to run that far. All you have are these bloodied feathers. I'm looking around, just... distraught. Looking back at the car. Did Toby come out, or is he just sitting in there? No, I've come out as well, and I'm... I'm looking around as well, trying to find who the hell we crashed with. There was a man. There was a man in a lab coat. He... He was this... I can swear it was the same man that let me in this morning. I look at the car. Is it... Is it damaged? It is. Uh, it isn't totaled, but there's a nasty dent in the bonnets and the grill. Uh, the grill is itself shattered at the front. The windscreen, thankfully intact, without any cracks. But there's likewise an indentation on the road, so something heavy has collided with the car and rolled over it, undoubtedly. But most remarkable, and most disgusting, is the greasy film that coats the metallic hood and windscreen now. A liquid that is just seeping downward now. It has a yellowish, greenish, maybe ochre would be the best way to describe it, tinge, and a really foul smell. What the fuck? It's disgusting. You clearly hit something, but... Uh, look. This, this is some weird shit again. This is... I don't think you hit a normal person. That wouldn't be like this. It's like something is working against us, and then at the same time with us. What what did you experience? What strange things did you experience? Anything else than the the hot rifle? The rifle was the, the clearest thing because, I mean, look, I, I don't trust my own senses all the time. I, you know, I, I deal with some shit from everything that I've been through, you know, and it's been like that for a while, but... I'm telling you, that, that rifle, that rifle, that was real, and it wasn't real because it wasn't just me. It wasn't in my head, it wasn't... It was Dwayne, too. That was real. That was real. That's what I've seen. Everything else is... I, I don't know, I, I don't think... I, I wouldn't trust it if I were you. It could just be me. Just my... My brain coming up with shit. I'm looking at him, feeling sympathy, feeling empathy feeling how I can relate to what he's saying, though I'm not really willing to admit that. What about Dwayne, I say? Is he... He seems different from us. Has he been through... Do you know? Are you close to him? Has he been through other things? Dwayne's good people. He's always been nice to me. and He's been nice now, too. Oh. We got a real shot at solving this with him. You are illuminated by headlights as a car travelling in the same direction as you sees the... The driver clearly sees the two of you standing in the road by the verge and your car pulled over. 
you recognize uh, Miriam Chandler, a uh, businesswoman from the town, as she pushes the button, her window goes down. Sylvia! Sylvia Spears? Miriam? Yes, it's me. I... We hit something. I couldn't say what. It, it's, there's nothing here. You can see the car. It's been messed up. Uh, I, I can't. Oh, uh, are the two of you okay? Do I need to call someone? She lifts her mobile phone. Uh, hang on, let me see. I, I, I get back into the car and I start try to start the engine again. It, it runs. I, I think we'll be alright. We'll just need to uh, to get to a service depot or something. Uh, there might be something leaking, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it should be fine, thanks. Oh, sure. Well, you know that, that there's been an awful spate of deer uh, crossing the roads. Uh, not, not quite here, but on the outskirts of town. Maybe they're moving in maybe they're moving in inside anyway I've got to get going but uh, I, I do hope um, uh, uh, yes and she drives off at some speed well now that she left and the car is running again I just motion for Toby to get back in oh yeah we had better go uh, it was just the deer alright I mean clearly it, it must have run off into the woods wasn't a fucking deer, I say, and I just sniff the bottle that I drank from before. I fucking know that it wasn't a deer, alright? But isn't it easier that way? Isn't it easier if it was a deer? We'll just leave it at that. Isn't there enough weird shit that we have to go through now? I look at you for a bit. Fine. It was a deer. I put it into drive and I go. Just a deer. Just a deer. Dwayne, your journey is, well, less eventful. Other than the trepidation that you feel about meeting the woman you had an affair with decades ago. And potentially her husband. You know, you've crossed paths with with her a few times since then, but you've always made the effort to, to stay apart uh, from either... And John Switzer, just in case there's any awkwardness. You're both grown-ups. You know, you know what the cost is to having an affair, making a mistake. You'd think you could handle it that way, but there's still that juvenile feeling of stress, of anxiety, whenever you've met. So, pulling up outside the Switzer household brings those feelings right back. It certainly does. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have to, but I have to... I have to find out. I want to deny it. I really do, but I'm a police officer. The whole point is you eliminate the impossible so you know what the possible thing is. So, the truth is, if I can't prove that it's not Eric, then it it could actually be him. He could have come back. He could have done something on you. On you. When I checked in every now and then, hell, when was the last time? I don't even remember. I knew he was a little troubled when he was growing up, but this, I can't believe it. But all I have to do is pretend this is part of procedure. Just find out where he is. If they say he's in Seattle, well, then he's in Seattle. At least, I don't know. I get out of the car and I try and calm myself as I go up to the door and politely knock. You don't have to wait long before Eva answers. Immediately upon seeing you, she looks shocked and she becomes nervous. You see her fiddling with her hands, with her wedding ring. Trademark behaviour. You've seen this kind of thing thousands of times before in your role on the force. Whenever someone has got something to hide, they have a tell. And Eva isn't very good at hiding hers. Uh, Dwayne, uh, what, what brings you to, to the neighborhood? I take a moment to consider her. It's been years, and it wasn't all so bad, I guess. It was a mistake. I know it was a mistake. But at the time, it was when Susan, my wife, she was fighting. She was fighting so damn hard, the cancer, but it was getting bad by that point, and I made a mistake. 
I find myself angry that I'm thinking about this sort of thing, and I push it down, very deep down, and try and sound professional. Miss Switzer, don't worry, this isn't anything serious. Uh, I just need to ask you a little follow-up question about something we're investigating down at the station. Don't worry, I don't need to come in. Uh, you can if you want. John is here. He's uh, he's just in the living room eating eating his dinner. Uh, if if you want to come in, you can. I just, just you should you should know that. No, that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll come into the hallway, but I promise, I, I promise it's like five ten minutes, and then I'm gone. It's just a silly thing. Well, maybe not so silly. Who is it, honey? Uh, it's uh, it's Dwayne McLean, the the chief. Oh, oh, hi, Dwayne. Hey, uh, don't worry. Just just coming in to ask you guys just a little question or two. Nothing serious, hopefully. Oh, sure. Just shout if you need me. I step into the hallway and take my hat off. Uh, so so, what is it that I can help you with, Dwayne? It's about. Eric. She starts growing clearly nervous again. I, I've. He's fine as far as I know. I mean, um. I've not really seen him much in the last few years since he left Devon's Port. I, you know, I, I call him on his birthday at Christmas, but he doesn't always answer. I've invited him back on a few occasions just to spend the the holidays with us, but he never has. I see. Why are you asking after Eric? Kind of wrinkle my nose, as I say. It's a lead I'm following up on. I'm sure you heard of Patrick Wilson and all that horrible business that happened recently. Oh, oh yes, it was... A terrible, terrible business. Are you are you saying Eric had anything to do with that? No, no, of course you're not. Of course you're not. He, he doesn't even live here anymore. How could he? Exactly. What's that about Eric? Uh, it's, it's okay, dear. I, I'm handling it. Did Eric and Patrick ever hang out? Were they friends when they were kids? Did he ever come over and play? No, no, no. I mean, the age gap was... Probably around ten years. Um, uh, as far as I know, they never crossed paths. So if they did, Eric never told me. But he always did keep himself to himself. Always playing video games. Much, much preferred being by himself than uh, hanging out with any kids from school. I mean, I'm sure you remember that he wasn't exactly the most sociable boy. I'm, I, I'm, I hope that now that he's in Seattle, he's made some friends his age and is living a good life, but I, I honestly wouldn't know. He he, he doesn't he, he doesn't tell me anything, but he, he never really did. I think he always felt like he didn't really belong here, and she gives you a look. I frown, thinking how that could have been my fault. I try and push that aside, and I continue to question. So you definitely haven't seen Eric at all for like, what, like a year? I, again, I'm wondering why. If, if I can ask, uh, why is that a question? Is, 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 does he have something to do with, with, what, with what happened at the school? I lower my voice. As I say, some of the witness statements, when they were asked to give a description of what they saw on that day, someone did a sketch and uh, <laughs> for some reason Patrick looked an awful lot like Eric. Uh, 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 that's, it's, it's impossible. How, how could that... That, no, 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 no. That, that, you know, I know Eric always had difficulties. It wasn't like he was the easiest of children to raise, but he, he wasn't. No, no. Uh, and anyway, the, the 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 police were there. You you were there. I heard that that your daughter was there. 
and if if Eric had been there, surely someone someone would have well the police would have done something. No, no, no. I, I've not seen him around. He's I've not seen him for at least two years. Uh, I, I guess the last time I spoke to him was probably somewhere close to that, and he never once, in fact, quite the opposite, expressed an interest in coming back to Devonsport. Uh, I, I think he he wanted to put this very much in the rear view, uh, so, so 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 no, Dwayne, uh, no, uh, Eric hasn't been here, and I, and I, and he ha didn't have anything to do with the the shooting at the school. Can I roll an intuition check here? Yes, absolutely. That is a seventeen. I kind of squint for a moment. Is she lying? Possibly not about everything, but is there any falsehoods in what she's saying? There's no lie in the sense that she is covering for someone. Um, she isn't... She's not telling any outright fibs. Then in that case, the second question. I can see I'm agitating her, and I don't want to do that. If anything, I want to help prove it's not him. So how could I get her to not be so agitated and maybe help me here. Understand that I'm actually trying to help rather than cause a problem. Assure her that you believe that Eric wouldn't do anything like that. That you think that he is a good boy despite his problems. That she has been a good mother despite her problems. I sigh and I say I know it couldn't be him. He's in Seattle, right? It, it's practically impossible. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's a few hours drive, but it, it, he wasn't going to come all the way. No, no, it's not possible. But the problem is there are people who are wanting answers. They, I haven't, I haven't told anybody that I recognize the sketch, okay? Eric's name hasn't come up yet. Only me and you know, okay? Okay. And I want to keep it that way. So... Help me just prove. Like, you got his phone number, right? I can ring him now. You got his address? I, I could maybe send someone over there. We can prove. You shouldn't interfere in his life, Dwayne. Uh, he's moved on from this place. He got out. People are going to interfere with his life soon. That's what I'm telling you. The sketch is going to be showed. It, it's him. It's him. There's no reason. All right, keep your voice down. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'll... Uh... I, I'll email you the details. It's it, it's fine. I, please just don't don't try pretending to be his dad all of a sudden. Uh, he's he doesn't know, and as far as I'm concerned, he never should. It will only agitate him even more. Okay, I, I okay. Then. I'm going to have to mention his name. I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to have to tell the other people investigating this that that sketch. Well, I'm saying it's a case of mistaken identity, okay? I mean, you can put that down on, on your record or whatever. He is not coming back here. He wouldn't come back here. I know he wouldn't come back here. And that's that. So if, if you're done, if you've got everything you've needed, then... I'll ask you to leave, please. Okay. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Dwayne. She leans over you to... Or past you. She leans past you to unflick the catch on the door. Pull it towards you. You can do the rest. I frown, thinking this isn't good enough, really, but it's going to have to do... I turn, I put my hat on, I say goodnight loudly so that her husband knows I'm leaving, and I'll go. And I leave the house, go to the vehicle, and uh, take out my phone. I hope she emails me soon. Yeah, you don't have to wait more than a few minutes before you get a perfunctory email. It has his address and telephone number. I'll begin driving to the school. And on the way, just quickly give the number a ring. I doubt anyone's going to answer, but it's something to do on the drive. 
The voicemail that we reach doesn't even have a familiar voice attached to it. It's, uh, you have tried calling number, and then it goes through the number and ends in a beep for you to leave a voicemail. Do you do so? Part of me thinks if he is involved, letting him know we know is stupid. So, no, I don't. I don't leave a voicemail. Okay. Let's go back to the Wilson household now, where our other two investigators have just rolled up. It's a sorry state, especially compared to the Switzer house, not that you'd know it. The Switzer house was nicely nestled among hedgerows and other similar buildings, no doubt built by the same city planner and architect. This one, on a small rise with a forest to its rear, would look nice. Except it's been the victim of quite some severe vandalism. The first sign of it is the mailbox outside has been struck from its post. No doubt this has happened every time they've tried putting it back up. As you walk up the drive, the walls of the house have been spray painted. At some point someone has tried to clean the paint off or paint over it, but They've clearly given up on that for the time being. The slogans, the words, the insults that are written across the wall and the front door are revolting. Some of them are directly accusatory. Killers and you killed our children. Others are just plain crude. Fuck off. Leave our town. Go to fucking hell. That kind of thing. As we're walking up along all this, seeing it, I look over to Toby and I say, Well, would you call yourself a people person, Toby? Um, I guess. Uh, sure. Right. Well, feel free to do a bit of the talking, then. The front door swings open before you can even carry on speaking to each other. You can see the bespectacled figure of a quite diminutive man, Paul Wilson. You know him again, one of the local businessmen, middle-aged, thinning hair. He looks angry and upset, frustrated, worn down, and he just shouts at the two of you without really identifying who you are. Please just leave us alone! Um, Paul, hey, it, it, it's, it's to Toby, Toby Hoybox. Sorry, I don't want to disturb you or anything. I just, just wanted to talk to you, all right? We come in peace. We're, about what? We're, uh, sorry about your loss and this state that things have gone to. We're part of an investigation where we believe that something has occurred here that indicates that it's not it's not your or your son's fault the things that happened and we're trying to prove the contrary. Alright? His eyebrows go down in the middle. He looks confused. You're not I know the two of you. You're not journalists for some rag, so... I'm Sylvia Spears, I work for... Yeah, yeah, I know who I know who you are, Mrs. Spears, um, and I know Toby Hoivak there from the, uh, the Lion Bar, uh, okay, I bet, I guess you best bo both come in, then. If that'd be alright, that'd, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, please, uh, take your shoes off before coming into the hall. I do so, and I, I enter. Yeah, I uh, do a brief inspection of the interior as I step in and then take off my shoes. The house is in a state of uncleanliness, likely brought about by stress and depression and a general sense of futility, but just at the end of the hallway, 
edging into the kitchen, you can see boxes. You know, like someone's packing to leave. Okay, um, so I guess out with it. Um, you think that my, what, my, our son wasn't working alone, or what? Yeah, we found some evidence that pointed to someone else having been involved. Maybe someone who put ideas in his head, or... I, I knew it! I knew it! I said I told them! When, when those FBI agents came here on the day, and they were saying that our son had done this... Uh, Clara! Clara! Uh, there's investigators here, they're saying... They're saying Patrick didn't was under the influence of someone else. Uh, that he, he was coerced into doing it. Uh, what? what, what? They're that, And she enters the hallway as well. Uh, who? Who? Uh, wh where, where, what did you find? Where, where, where did you find this? We have a possible sketch of a person that has been identified by one of the teachers, but we have left no other trace of the crime scene. Now, since this is come up recent. I'm I'm vaguely hesitant to show it to you. I, I understand that you want to know as soon as possible, but before we go to that, could we perhaps ask you if you know that Patrick had been associating with anyone else before the event? Someone perhaps that you didn't know from before? Uh, it's something we've uh, we've racked our brains over for, for weeks, as you can probably imagine. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't, um, I, I looked through his, his diary, which wasn't like some tell-all thing, it was just an appointments and, and lesson plan, and, uh, it was just his friend Hussein, really, that he spent time with, him and, and, and the teacher, Mr. Dubois, who, who was, uh, killed in the shooting. Uh, of course, his girlfriend, Ashley. Um. Are you saying... Sorry, I might have fallen behind on the information here that, that Patrick spent time privately with the teacher? Uh, yes, uh, uh, there wasn't... Uh, believe me, if, if we had any suspicions about Mr. Dubois being, you know... Um, we wouldn't have let him spend time with, with Patrick. But he always showed such an interest, he was so encouraging. Uh, Patrick had just been awarded a prize in the Science Olympiad. Um, he, 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 he was obsessed that he would be one day responsible for helping clean up the Pacific Ocean. He wanted to be a marine... What was it? Biologist. A bi biologist. And um, what about Hussein? Do I know personally if he was one of the victims? Uh, you don't believe he was one of the victims. The police reports that uh, two of you had a chance to review did retell that Hussein had been a witness to the event and had fled the school when it occurred. That Hussein had intended on meeting with Patrick on the morning because they usually went to school together, but that Patrick hadn't met with him. And so instead, Hussein intended to meet with him at school, but that's when everything, unfortunately, began. Uh, so you have heard of Hussein's name before, but haven't had any interaction with him, or any real reason to place him under any kind of suspicion. I see. So no one... No one else that you would know of? No, like I said, we I looked through his diary, I, uh, and, the, and it wasn't just... Uh, wasn't just my wife. Uh, we gave everything: uh, the computer, the uh, his diary, his school timetable, hell, uh, whatever we could to the uh, FBI. Um, because because they, they demanded it, you know. Um, I we wanted to help, and um, well, all that really, all we were told was our son was a was clearly a troubled boy. And he wasn't. He wasn't troubled at all. He was a good boy with good grades. He loved science. He loved us, his sister, Elizabeth, who's up upstairs right now. And I'd rather she wasn't dragged into this. 
if there is any chance that she would know anything that you might have missed. I have been a parent myself. I am a parent myself. Grandparent, as it were. And um, I know how, how easy it is to live a busy life and things sometimes go under the radar. She, she has been asked before. Uh, you know, it's not like the FBI left her uh, to her own devices. She's been horribly grilled. She's taken the brunt of all of this. She's lost all of her friends. She she can't go out without being called names or even having things hurled at her because of because of what happened. Uh, so I, again, I'm I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give you permission to to speak to Elizabeth um, it's 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 not fair on her I understand now that you've presented this I would you have a sketch of a person I have taken a photo on my oh uh, yes well uh, I'm happy to, to look at it yeah yeah me too me too in case just in case you'd seen him around the house or anywhere uh, not necessarily associating with Patrick then. And I start op opening up my phone in the gallery and bring out the f photo of the sketch that I took before we left. Clara shakes her head. She doesn't recognize the sketch at all. No, no. Uh, I don't know this person. Paul, however, squints. Huh. I mean, maybe... Uh, Patrick, um, sometimes went in, like, you know, chat rooms and played video games, um, not, not much, uh, he was more of an academic than a gamer or anything like that, um, I'm sure I remember at some point, it may have even been on YouTube, he, um, I'm sure I remember walking into his room once with his uh, dinner and he was watching a he was either watching a video this face looks familiar from a video or from a call he was on as soon as I walked in he shut it down like he was viewing something you know he shouldn't um, is that um, I don't know how much this has been gone over I suppose by the police but do you is his computer still here with any possible no, the FBI took it. They never sent it back. I would have expected as much. Now, I I do understand that you'd rather keep his sister out of this. Would you mind at all if we waited here that you asked her about this man, if, you, if she'd seen him before? They look at each other. You said you're a mother yourself, Mrs. Spears? I, uh... I lost my grandson in the shooting. Oh, I'm... I didn't know. Um, you know, we've spent so long studying the, that list of names, and... It's funny, you live in a place like this for all your life, and you think you know your neighbors, and you're, that you're even friends with them, and... I'm sorry, I, I, I had no idea. That's... thank you. Uh... Yeah, um, it would probably be best coming from you, uh, love. Um, Clara nods and heads upstairs. Uh, oh, can I can I take your phone? Maybe I can just show... Yes. I just hand it over to her and I take a step back. Do you mind if I step outside and have a cigarette? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, you might be best off going out the back, though we don't... I mean, we'll be gone as soon as Patrick's body is um, released, you understand, but if you're seen outside the front, you might get tarred with the same brush that we we've, uh, we have cover covering us right now. I nod and I step out the back. I glance at Toby before I do so. Oh, I'll join you. I come out, I, I hand you a well, I, yeah, I hand you the pack as I'm lighting up a cigarette for myself. Pull that up as well. Take a deep drag. Fucking horrible, isn't it? Must be a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anything you're thinking of while we were here? I mean, it seemed like there had been some connection, right? That face is important. I really hope Dwayne will be able to find out who it is. I think we should definitely ask his friend as well. This Hussein. Like I said, I meant what I said in there. A lot of the stuff, especially in those years, just goes by unnoticed. They start wanting their integrity and privacy. You know, or I don't know if you know. I remember. I was... <laughs> I was a young man once, you know? I know I was. Yeah. Clara enters the backyard with the two of you, interrupting. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry um, she passes your phone back. I promise I didn't press anything, but it looks like that photo of the fa that face has been deleted. I mean, I did show it to Elizabeth beforehand. Uh, so, I mean, if you've got the original sketch, that's fine. Uh, if not, I'm I'm so sorry. It just, it seems to have vanished, maybe, if you have some kind of recycle bin. Um, but Elizabeth had a good look at it. Uh, I, I didn't tell her exactly why um, I was asking her to look, although I think she's, uh, she's clever enough to, to work out that it's to do with Patrick. She, um... She said that it was a familiar face, but she didn't say... It sounds, it sounds ridiculous, and so take it with a pinch of salt. She's a very traumatized girl, given everything that she's been through, but I'll... She said that she's had nightmares of this face, that since Patrick's death, that she would dream of walking into his bedroom and seeing her brother laying there. I I'm going to tell you exactly as she told me. Um, laying there just full of... full of bullet holes and his bed covered in blood and that she would always go over to try and push the holes closed uh, like she could just put her hands on him and make the the wounds go away and but as soon as she touched him his face would change into that uh, face that uh I'm sorry uh I know it's it um uh, it, obviously she must have seen it somewhere if she's been dreaming of it, but she doesn't know and uh, she's very upset now and and I think um, it might be a good idea if, if you left. Um, I, I don't think there's anything else we can really help you with but, but I can give you our number uh, if, if you find anything. I mean, we, we, we would want to hear if it turns out that of course Patrick it wasn't responsible uh, wholly for what happened. Uh, he was he was a good boy. Uh, he he never he wasn't a bully. He wasn't ever in any gangs. He never picked on anyone, and he wasn't really picked on either. He was just a good student. Did you did you enforce a lot of rules and uh, regulations on on him as a child? Uh, no, no more than I I think any other parent. Uh, uh, I know it may sound rich for me to say, but we were a loving, normal family before this happened. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Shunned for Cult Divinity Lost, which was written by Jonas Nelson, with additional material from Pet Nalo. The Shunned was released as part of the Screams and Whispers scenario collection. Our Game Master was our dear friend Matthew Dawkins, and the series has been sponsored by the fine folks at Helmgast. The music was made by Atrium Carceri, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our Champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Ludwig Manford, Bob Lange, Julian, 
Cameron, Xavier and Anton for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Inti Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as the Champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember, death is only the beginning.